ever want to just find a quiet space, away from all of life's stresses? Well, there's one place that's always peaceful, under the sea. And we all know the best way to visit under the sea is with your own diver's helmet. Ah, the serenity. Hi, my name is Chris, and I like to make things. Today, we're going to make a diving helmet. The first step is to print out the pattern. Make sure your printer is set to print at actual size, and then make yourself comfortable while the printer does its thing. Once the pattern pieces are printed, you can get off your butt and start taping them together. Overlap the pages and line up the registration marks. I like to do this on a window, so I can see clearly through the two sheets of paper. Now you can take your pattern and start cutting it out. Cutting just on the outside of the black line. Go downstairs and grab a big sheet of foam and start tracing your pattern pieces, remembering to mark and label all the alignment points. Wherever two of the same piece are required, make sure you flip the pattern piece over before tracing the second one. I like to designate the flipped over ones with an A after the number so I remember which are which. Once everything is traced, grab your ocean-themed cutting surface and start cutting. Once your pieces are all cut out, grab your blow dryer. You can start forming sheets 1, 2, and 3 by heating them up and shaping them over your knee. Now it's time to get out your glue gun and start gluing. I just bought myself a super swanky silicone baking mat. These are amazing because the glue just peels right off them. Start by gluing the V-shaped cutout on piece number 1. Press the two sides together while holding it down against the silicone baking mat. This should leave you with a fairly smooth seam. Now glue the cutout on piece number two. On longer seams, I like to glue about five to eight centimeters at a time. Hold them until the glue dries, and then go on to the next five to eight centimeters. Glue piece number three to piece number one, using marks numbers 10 and 11 to line it up. Then piece two gets glued on to pieces one and three, lining up numbers six, seven, eight, and nine. Glue piece 2 to piece 1, lining up mark 4, and that gives you half of the main helmet body. And I bet you know what I'm going to say next. Make the other half and glue the two together. Now grab piece 4 and 4A and glue the ends together to make a nice ring, which will be attached to the main helmet body by lining up the front and back seams. Glue the front and back first, and then glue the sides, trying to keep everything equal. Make another ring out of piece 5 by gluing the ends, and glue the flat side of that onto piece 6. Make sure to line up the marks on the widest part of piece 5 with the center of the tabs on piece 6. Now you can glue your new faceplate over that big hole in the middle of your helmet. And again, to make sure it's all lined up, glue a little at the top, a little at the bottom, a little at one side, a little at the other side, and then fill in anywhere that you haven't glued yet. You might find there's a little extra foam on the side edges, which you can trim off if they bug you. If it doesn't bug you, you just saved five minutes. All right, now you can glue piece nine on the side holes, which will be covered with a super funky fun grid thing -o. Just match the slots up with the other slots with a bit of glue in there and you've got it. Make a ring out of piece seven and glue it onto piece eight. This time lining up the narrowest part of piece seven with the alignment marks on piece eight. And you can glue that top window thingy to the main helmet body now. Angle all the corners of piece 16 with your knife, and then glue the grid in place. Glue two of piece 12 together, and glue it onto the side of the faceplate. Now we can bend down that tab and glue it so it looks a little bit like a hinge. On goes the front faceplate grill. Now make a sandwich of three piece 15s, which will get glued below the larger tab on the faceplate. Grab your blow dryer and use it to heat and curve piece 11 so it looks a bit like a bib. Line the tabs up of piece 11 with the front and back center line of the helmet and glue them into place. You want to glue it so piece 11 overlaps piece 4 at the front and back by about a centimeter. Now glue the sides and then the rest of the way around. The extra overlap you left at the front and back helps the breastplate keep its form once it's glued down, like so. It's feeling awesome, but it's not quite done. Cut a strip of foam 92 centimeters long by 3 centimeters wide, and use it to cover up the seam around your helmet. 
Trim off any extra foam with your knife. Now cut another piece of foam 90 centimeters long by 1 centimeter wide and glue it vertically down the center of the strip you just glued on. As we seem to be in the strip cutting mood, let's cut another one 150 centimeters long by 2.7 centimeters wide. And this one will run around the outside of the breastplate. Oops, I almost forgot pieces 13 and 14. I don't know what they're supposed to be, but hey, they look cool. Make a mark at the center, front and back, of the rim around piece 11. And then make a mark every 9 centimeters until you reach the top of the shoulder. Now grab a nut and glue it on top of each mark. I'm also filling the centers with a puddle of glue, just so they stay on that little bit better. And a wing nut on the faceplate finishes it off. Now paint it black and go play some foosball. Once you've let your son beat you in a game of foosball, it's time to get out your metallic paints. Wearing a rubber glove, apply a small amount to your finger, and then lightly apply it to the painted surface of the helmet. To get a contrasting color for the portholes, I used DecoArt Metallic Luster. The color I used was Gold Rush, but I mixed in a little bit of the bronze Liquitex acrylic paint as well. And once that's done, you're done. Thanks for watching, and if you want to make your own diver's mask, now you can. Boom. I think this is probably one of the best projects I've ever made. I'm super impressed with how it turned out. And if I had some reason to wear one around the house, I would. In fact, I have. If you want to get the pattern, there's a link right there. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> Are you like a bunch of rocks? <laughs> some rocks in my pants. Further down. What if I put this in my pocket? That's not gonna fit in your pocket. Hey, recording? your thing's going away. <laughs> I think that worked really well. <laughs>